In addition to making it almost too easy to view all of your shots in a sequence and then quickly open them up in Nuke to begin creating and reviewing versions, the Hero Nuke Bridge has a few other tricks up its sleeve as well, and in this video I'm going to be walking you through them. Now I should definitely point out that everything that I'm about to show you will work whether you're working with Hero Player alongside Hero or on its own. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the Send to Nuke functionality. So as well as being able to open shots on the timeline in Nuke, Hero and now Hero Player can easily send additional clips, shots and even full sequences over to a Nuke instance for use in your Nuke script. So as you can see I've got my Nissan X-Trail sequence open and I've also been doing a little bit of work here on shot 100, but to really finish it up I need a couple of elements from my existing Nissan X-Trail sequence. So I'm going to head back over into Hero Player. I'm going to come up here to my project bin and just hit tilde so I can see all of those clips nice and easily. Now right now Hero Player is tracking the Nuke instances that I have open. And in fact we can see that if we come up here to Window, Hero Nuke. So you can see in this top list it says Nuke Connections and it's got Shot 100 Connected. So this is the Nuke instance that I've been working on down here. So I'm going to close up our Hero Nuke panel. I'm going to select the three clips that I wish to send over into my instance of Nuke, which would be these three here. I'm going to right click and come down to my Nuke menu and inside of there we now have a new option, which is send to Nuke and then the name of the Nuke instance. So if I have three Nuke instances open, or if I'm working on three different shots say, there would be three send to Nuke options in this list, all with a different name in brackets. Now in this case of course I only have the one open which is shot 100 so I'm going to click that button and what Hero is going to do is go away and add in a script into this open instance of Nuke over the Hero Nuke bridge to allow us to work with those assets directly inside of this shot. And there they are, nice and easily brought in, ready to be used. So that's taking over single clips but what if we want to take over a shot from the timeline? Well I'm going to delete these guys and head back in to Hero Player. I'm going to deselect my shots and hit the tilde key again to unfull screen this panel. Now in this instance I want to take over this track item into my existing Nuke shot. So just like we did with the clips, I'm going to right click it, come up to Nuke, send to Nuke, shot 100. And what this is going to do is exactly the same as before, just pipe that information over the Hero Nuke bridge into that existing Nuke instance, making sure it doesn't affect any of the work that you've done so far, so it's not going to interfere with any of the nodes that you've added to the script whatsoever. And you can see that not only have we got the plate here, but we've also got our hero data as well, meaning this is going to be displayed exactly as it was in the timeline inside of Hero Player. Now just to make this line up nicely, I'm going to come in and bring in a retime node. I'm just going to quickly set that to 1001 so both of our shots line up. And you can see I now have this element in and ready to use straight away. So that's sending clips and track items over into existing Nuke instances, but what about entire sequences? Well, if I come down to my Nissan X-Trail sequence here and select it, we can get this sent over as well. So I'm going to right-click it, come down to Nuke, and just like before, send to Nuke shot 100. Now this will take an extra couple of seconds as it's generating a brand new Nuke script behind the scenes, which represents exactly how this sequence looks on our timeline. I'm going to come back to our Nuke script. And there it is, our entire sequence, as presented to us in Hero Player, now entirely constructed from Nuke nodes. So you can pick and choose different bits of this to use in your shot wherever you want. Of course, this also gives you a way to run off a quick encode of the current state of your project, perhaps pushing it out to a pre-existing Nuke render farm. So this is a quick introduction to the send to nuke functionality in Hero Play, and you can see it's extremely useful for sending clips, track items, and even sequences over into existing nuke shots. So that's certainly one way to use the send to nuke functionality, but another interesting method might be to treat Hero Player as a full asset library. So I could potentially have a folder full of fire elements, of smoke elements, of snow elements. I could browse through them, opening them and playing them back as and when I wanted. And then when I'm ready, I could pick the ones that I needed and send them over into my specific nuke shot. Another fantastic feature of Hero Player is the fact that you can create and edit sequences just as easily as you would inside of Hero. In this project, I've got some footage from my Nissan X-Trail sequence, but no sequences at all. So let's go ahead and create one. I'm going to select my sequences bin and hit Command N to create a brand new sequence, and then double click it to open it down here on the timeline. I'll come up to my footage folder, grab us a couple of clips, and drag those down to video one. Now at this point I have the full editing functionality of Hero available to me, so I'm quickly going to make a few cuts here using the Shift-C shortcut, and then going to delete the track items I don't want and move them into place. 
Now just like in here, I have control over handles, I can roll these clips, slide these clips, but in here I've just created a very basic sequence that I now want to continue working on in Nuke. So just like before, I'm going to come up to my sequence 9 here in my project bin. I'm going to right click it, come down to my Nuke menu, and I want to either open in a new instance or send to my existing instance, which I'm going to do in this case. Now here I've just created a very simple single track timeline, although this can be multi-track just like in Hero. So let's hop over into Nuke and take a quick look at it. Give that just a second, and there it is. We've started our sequence entirely inside of Hero Player, and it's now ready to be worked on here in Nuke. The final feature I want to take a look at is the fact that we've now integrated Nuke's flipbook to be used with Hero and Hero Player 1.6. So in this project I've just got the sequence that I previously created in Hero Player, I've added a grade at the bottom and also a blur, and I now want to flipbook this over into Hero Player. So I'm going to select my blur node, I'm going to hit Alt F on my keyboard to bring up the flipbook settings, and you'll notice that at the top here we now have a Hero option in the drop down list. Of course the hero it uses here will be in fact Hero Player, as that's what I've added into my Hero Connection settings. So with that selected, all of the other options are exactly the same as they have been previously, I'm just going to hit OK. And as soon as this finishes rendering out, it's going to pop up straight away for us to review here in Hero Player. So that is just a quick look at some of the awesome brand new features available to you in Hero and Hero Player 1.6v1.